Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks, back again with another podcast. I think we'll call this series number two, joined again by John. How are you, John? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Long time no see? Yeah, it's been a busy month. Uh, lots of cricket going on and tournaments and uh, and then obviously the classes, with, uh, as we mentioned in the last podcast, uh, a lot of my students are now taking their exams, so oh, there's yes. extra classes going on and changes and timetables and everything so it's been a busy busy month and we haven't really had time to do the the podcast and it drops off next month as well god next month is dead yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as soon as the exams are finished uh, and of course the, in june the kids do their reduced timetable um so it makes it very difficult for the the parents to sort themselves out and come yeah, to that's the right, class that's right yeah because kids um as soon as the the summer starts they have as you said the reduced timetable or yeah. the reduced school day what is it? Um, they come out at just after lunch or something, do they? Or? Um, well, it's, it depends on what the children do. Um, the children can actually leave by one o'clock. Uh, well, in, that, in our they, school, it's one o'clock. If they have lunch at home. If they have lunch at home. Well, I think it's one thirty at your school, isn't it? Um, and then, because uh, we start at half an hour so, earlier at ours. Yeah. Uh, and then the kids that stay on for lunch, uh, my daughters uh, like to stay on for lunch because they like to play with their friends uh, in the playground and stuff. So well, they're not that keen on the food, but uh, they like playing with their friends. So we, I normally go and pick them up at about a quarter to three, three o'clock, which is the time they're allowed to leave. Um, and then obviously you've also got the option to to leave your kids there in acogida, um, which they can uh, keep until I think about five o'clock. But yeah, so the majority the, of the kids are leaving by one yeah. or uh, three. So the acogida is like where the, the kids can have they when they come. What, what will we call that in English? Um, D- uh, so, daycare? Well, it? yeah, I suppose it's like a, an additional care service after yeah. school time. Yeah. Uh, so for, for parents that are working early and finishing late, they can leave yeah. their kids from 7 o'clock in the morning and they can pick them up. I think this school over the road here about... Maybe six is the the maximum time, but of course you yeah. pay for it. It's not a free. Yeah, service. you have to pay for it, and it's, it actually gets quite expensive actually as well. If uh, you, you're doing it every day, if you do the, the odd day here and there because yeah. you've got meetings, or whatever, it's all right. But yeah, well, my son goes for an hour, and it's about thirty five euros a month. So that's good. Mm. My, my one was a lot more expensive. Was it <laughs> yeah. in the mornings or the afternoon? Uh, they went for just half an hour in the mornings. Um, I think they went. I think I dropped them off at half eight, so I had time to get to my work when I was actually working at the school. Uh, so I was working at the school just up the road so I had to leave them at half eight and then I was able to get back to the school where I worked uh, for nine o'clock and I think that cost me 40, 48 euros I think it was Each. per uh, mm-hmm. per child yeah yeah well that's it it's not cheap it's not cheap I, I'm not, I don't complain about the cost of uh, my son's school I pay for his uh, canteen his lunch every day I think it's about 108 euros a month yeah 30 something as I said before for the uh, acogida for that uh, hour that he goes before it's about 150 euros a month plus the books and all those things so yeah. it's not that not that expensive it's not too bad yeah it's not too bad exactly now uh, another reason that we haven't been uh, speaking for a while is the amount of public holidays that we've had <laughs> i mean we had easter so i think we stopped before easter yeah. if i remember correctly and uh, Easter came and went, and then of course we had last week. There were two public holidays in Madrid. Yep, the first and the second. The first of May, so the yep. uh, the May Day or Labor Day, as we say in Australia. Then we had the uh, Comunidad de Madrid Day, yep. which was on the second. Yep. And uh, so everybody took the Friday off automatically, or a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, the did. schools were actually off. Uh, the schools were yeah, off. The schools right, were off on yeah, the Friday. Yeah, yeah, it actually yeah. had the puente, the bridge. That's whatever right. You want to yeah. call it. Yeah, the puente or the bridge. The bridge is a, is a concept. Well, actually, we could speak about that in a minute, the, the concept of the puente and the uh, aqueducto or the bridge or whatever they want to call it. And um, the uh, – sorry, next week again we have another holiday on again, Wednesday. 14th and 15th. 14th is also well, a here, holiday here. But in Madrid it's only one day, the 15th. No, it's 14th uh, is just in Rivas. That's yep. right. So we celebrate two days in Rivas. doesn't affect me because I work in Madrid, but – I suppose suppose your students will be off. Yep, my students will be off, and no I'll be kid, off as well. Uh, uh, no, no school. Oh, no, you'll be off. Yeah, I I go with the uh, Rivas um, bank holidays because obviously that's what the yeah. uh, affects the children here. So if there's a, a bank holiday in Madrid and not in Rivas, I still work. Um, so it's so, quite funny actually because the majority of the parents of my daughter's friends are, are working in Madrid yeah. or around Madrid and. 
Uh, well, the majority, big, the majority of lunch. people do. The majority yeah. of people here, I think, work. You're probably one of the few people that's. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm here a lot of the days as well. It's very quiet yeah. during the week. You know, you can take your dog out. You see a few pensioners walking around, but you don't see a lot of activity no. here during the day. That's actually that's actually one of the topics that we're going to speak about today. Whether you live on the outskirts of one of these cities here in Spain, whether you live in the yeah. centre. We had a comment uh, on, I think it was on the last podcast, or maybe one of the other videos, I can't remember, from a guy who said, I'll just uh, read it here. He said, uh, you touched on the topic of living in Barcelona. It's true, uh, all that you said, but I should mention uh, as someone living in the outskirts that the cost is much more reasonable than in the center. So he said he's paying 650 plus expenses right now for a reasonable apartment. Now, it is true that in a place like uh, Rivas here, we're 20 kilo- 19 kilometers yeah. uh, east of Madrid. It's a little bit cheaper, I suppose, the rent, but... Uh, not that much. It's not <laughs> It's not that much here, yeah. at least. At yeah, least. It's, I mean, you can go to other um, small towns, uh, villages on the outskirts of Madrid, and you can get cheaper uh, apartments quite easily but you have to go a little bit further out Rivas is still on the metro line That's it. Um, even Arganda is on the metro and the uh, uh, the Renfe the train line which is a bit further away from Rivas you've got the metro line and the buses and everything people are going to be spending more money to, to live here so yeah at the moment it's still pretty expensive yeah. to live here and if we talk about all of the services that you get here as well, they're not cheaper either. I mean, it's not no. cheaper to go out for a meal here. It's not cheaper no. to go out for a drink. No. And I, I don't know what the reason for that is. Maybe they exploit the fact that, you know, people... Well, it's a big town, really. I mean, we've got a pop- population of uh, closing on 90,000 now in Rivas. Mm. Um, Gro- so Growing very quickly. Yeah, and, and of course, you've still got that closeness to, to Madrid as well. So they haven't really got an awful lot of competition. Uh, whereas if you go a bit further out and you're in a small town, small village, you've got three or four bars, they're all fighting for um, clientele. You know, the clientele. Mm. So the, the, you know, they do all keep the prices a bit uh, lower. And they also get cheaper produce uh, on the outskirts, whereas in Madrid you're still using the same provider, uh, suppliers that are uh, providing uh, the products at the same price as That's the ones it. in Madrid. So. Yeah. So basically, we're just competing with uh, with that. Yeah. But it, it's it's amazing when you go into the centre of Madrid. Obviously, you know you pay more for, for for rent if you live bang in the centre. But just because of that thing that you mentioned there, the competition aspect, mm. you can get a, a cheaper meal in the centre of Madrid in one of the best neighbourhoods than you can here sometimes. Yeah, you know? it's, it's the case. Which uh, doesn't seem uh, normal, but uh, apparently uh, Reborn here says that uh, he's living, I don't know how far away from the city centre he lives, but I don't know whether he mentions it here, but um, obviously he's found a place that is a lot cheaper, and maybe Barcelona has more more options there. Yeah. Yeah. He says that in 15 minutes he's in the city centre, and here yeah. it's uh, here we don't even have that advantage, do we? <laughs> if you go from Rivas to the centre of Madrid, you're talking on the buses, minimum 45 minutes. And, and they don't drop you in the centre. And they don't they? drop you in the centre. That's Conde de Casal. You know, mm. um, it's, it just takes so long to go through Rivas. Maybe if you live on the out, uh, right at the start of Rivas, you yeah. get a bus, and maybe you can be there in 25 minutes, but... Otherwise, it's going to take you a fair old way. And that's just con the Casal. And then you've got to get the Metro, which is going to be another 20 minutes or so to get into the centre. Mm-hmm. So, Now, you uh, you work here. So obviously, yep. you're not going into the centre every day. Your wife does. Yep, she does. Does yep. she? What, what's what's her opinion on living out? She prefers living out here. Obviously, her parents oh, yeah. were, 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 were here. And, uh, well, she's from Mostelis ori- originally. Oh, she's from Mostelis. Yeah, she's okay. actually from Mostelis originally. She uh, moved with a family to Rivas when she was 15. Mm. So she's grown up here as a, a teenager and but she, uh, does she ever put forward you know move, because she's working in madrid maybe, no, no maybe no, living closer no. to to where she works now no she no. she well one she prefers living outside of madrid uh we you know, it's a different style of life you know uh and with children so, so, i think it makes it easier so that's so, so that that's a point so the style of life different in, in, in what sense more open space or more open space there's um, more things you can do with a dog for example and other things you've got more freedom for the children i think as well in the center you've got to be a bit careful you know you let, let the kids go out they're straight out into the road straight out to uh lots of people walking around there is the 
obviously the concept of uh, homeless people, maybe uh, drugs being pushed around in the big cities and stuff as well. Uh, obviously you've got bad areas and you've got good areas, but it's always something that people worry about. Um, whereas in Rivas, it's, it, if it does go on, you don't really see it. So I think if, if you go to the outskirts, people feel a lot more secure. It's the security and letting your kids go out to, for example, this weekend, uh, we've got the Fiestas in Rivas. It's the local Fiestas. Um, and my daughter's uh, nearly 13 now. She goes She's going to go for the first time ever. She's going alone to the oh, uh, to the Fiestas for a couple of hours with her friends. But um, I, I, I see your kids walking the dog around. Yeah. Uh, so you, you don't have a problem to, to let them go out, take the dog around? No, no, no. They're just, I mean, they only go two blocks away. Uh, yeah, but still, uh, I mean, they're, you know, they're only yeah. 10 and 13 nearly. So uh, don't let them go too far because, you know, you still, you've got to be careful. Uh, but yeah, they take the dog out for a walk and things on their own. They've got to learn to look after uh, the pets, have their responsibilities and that. So mm-hmm. that's important. Yeah, I think that's it. So it's a, cur- it's a security aspect. And also the, the the fact that you can, I mean, he mentions here that the cleaner air, maybe the quality yeah. of the air is a little bit better as well. Uh, characteristic of Spanish cities, the big ones is that they are quite polluted, a lot of cars a lot of car pollution, a lot of noise pollution. Yeah, I, th- I find uh, the cities, well, at least in Madrid uh, and Barcelona as well, when I've, I've visited there, although I don't know Barcelona quite as well, there's not as many green areas in the cities here to what I'm used to back home. Mm. Again, I'm not going to compare it to all of Europe because I don't know all of Europe, but comparing to uh, the city back home, you know, even in London, you've got lots of uh, big parks around and... Uh, yeah, it's, it's just a little bit more. Uh, I don't know how to say it. it's, it's like in touch with a little bit of like countryside, if you like, a little bit of park. Um, whereas here, you've got Retiro, you've got Casa de Campo as well, which is, uh, I mean, it's not very convenient for us, it's the other side of Madrid, mm. but it's not lots of green grass and areas because obviously we're in the middle of Madrid and it's hot and you're not going to get grass everywhere. Um, but it's just not like the open space that we used to back home and I think you know that also affects people uh, in between pollution and greenery. Yeah, well there is a, a mass exodus every weekend for people leaving the city, you know. Mm. People people just seem to want to get out and, and get in touch with nature and it's something that you can't really do in the centre of the city. Especially the older the older you get, and if you have kids, you know you want to take them to a, a smaller village or something where mm. you know, as I said, they can they can see trees and they can they can be in touch with mm. nature. Whereas in uh, the center of Madrid, I lived in a place called Estrecho, which is very close to Cuatro Caminos. Yeah, and there was there was nothing around there. You know, the, I think the closest park was. Well, I can't even remember where it was, but I mean yeah. a park where you could, you know, go running and amongst the trees yeah. and, you know, not see anybody. I mean, there was nothing around there. And then I went to live in an area called Legathby. That was more or less the same. It's changed a little bit now because they've redeveloped that area there with the with the M30. Yeah. You know, that's all been turned into a park. Yeah, and it's getting a bit better, yeah. So they've redesigned that. But <clears throat> when I was living down there, it was pretty bad. The, you know, there were parks, but you, it's not like you walk outside and you can see anything you know yeah. you've, you've just i mean everything is just it's just cars and noise as i said and one of the things here is the noise uh, levels are really lower than than um are much lower i mean rivas is much lower than the center of madrid but then i mean you can compare that with any city it's just i think i mean rather than i think rather than us actually comparing uh madrid center to rivas we're uh, sort of more comparing the cities in general. Um, I it's think definitely I, my experience. I anyway. think that, that that noise thing because Madrid's that those high rise apartments, the yeah. noise does echo in those streets. Yeah. You know? So, you know, if, for example, if the, when the rubbish truck comes, everybody hears it. You know, yeah. where whereas that's true. Yeah. You know, so you've sort Echoes of got that echoing the tower effect. Blocks, yeah. <clears throat> that's it. And a lot of uh, in the summer uh, months, especially a lot of people are you know in the street. Uh, in Madrid I mean yeah. we were living in a place once with downstairs you had a bar and people were coming out onto the street at 3 o'clock in the morning as well yeah, of you course. Know, so. yeah. whereas you're not really affected by that so much when you live in the outskirts because we don't have yeah. bars downstairs it's a different well it's a different layout to the town as well, well that, that's it? it's, it's a, a different design yeah. that's right you're that's not, right. you haven't got quite so many bars at the bottom of flats and uh, near the houses that's and stuff it. you still do have bars at the bottom of flats and things but they're not the ones where people are going to be walking out at 3 o'clock in the morning so it's, it's, it's very different Mm. And the other thing uh, that I think 
living in a place like this because we're dependent on a major road to get in and out of the city yeah when there is a, a long weekend when there is uh you know the first week of august or when a lot of people are traveling to the beach it's not uh, it's not the best place to be living if you want to get uh, to and from the city yeah it gets it gets pretty congested uh they've, they've tried to well they've tried to ease it a little bit because it was a bit of a bottleneck going past Rivas. Um, it still, is, tried, it still it, is to some extent yeah it, they tried to ease it a bit but really until they can get three lanes going all the way through from Conde Casal all the way up to uh to at least past that uh again. past uh, the r3 um yeah. uh, exit they're going to be a bottleneck and even then if you even if you get three lanes all the way up to that point as soon as you get to that r3 it's going to be bottlenecked again which it which happens every summer as well and there's no way you're going to be able to put three lanes all the way through to valencia it's just not going to happen no i don't think anyone's expecting three no. lanes all the way to valencia but at least three lanes all the way as you said to you know, at least 30 kilometers out yeah. so that when you do live in a place like this and i i say Rivas because we're living here but if you're living in Alcorcon it's the same problem Yeah. if you're living in Mostales it's the same problem if you're living in Alcobendas it's the same problem so all of these outskirts yeah. all of these cities on the outskirts have those traffic problems yeah. that, that, that come from people in Madrid wanting to leave the city yeah and also there's the same problem getting into the city every morning in Russia uh, you know you've got all the uh, cars on the R, uh, the A3 in our case uh, it's just choco as soon as you get anywhere near the M30 uh, M40 You've got um, the traffic jams every morning. And that's something that I'm glad I don't have to worry about anymore. But that, um, uh, that, that's just the big city problem. At the exactly. The and that's why I like I like being in Rivas. I like working in Rivas. And I just don't like the whole uh, traffic thing. That just used to wind me up every morning. So if it's someone horrible. offered you a job in Madrid starting at 9 o'clock in the morning, you'd, <sighs> you'd think twice. I definitely, Yeah, unless it was something ex- extremely special. Um, or if I didn't have a job and I needed one, I would avoid it. Mm. So that's it. That's uh, that's a good thing to keep in mind. If you are going to be uh, coming to live in Spain or one of the big cities, uh, think about how you uh, need to get into the centre yep. if you don't want to live there. That's right. And a lot of people don't want to live in the centre. I mean, when you're young, it's fantastic. But when you start to you know get a bit older, yeah. your priorities change and you start to have kids, as, uh, as, which is our case. Uh, the priorities change. You're not really well. A lot of it depends on whether you actually want to have a car as well. I mean, you really don't want to be living in the centre and have a car because well, that gets expensive. Um, yeah, car, just a parking space or underground parking, anything like that is it just gets expensive. moving and then moving the, the thing. Yeah, um, and of course, I mean, for me, car a car is really important for me um, because of the cricket. Uh, just for one of the the points, and moving the girls around, uh, going to school every day. Uh, we don't have a, a school, uh, unfortunately, right next to us that uh, they've been given. We've been given the opposite end of the uh, the town uh, because of the way the system works here. And uh, yeah, what do you think about that system? I hate it. It's mm. ridiculous. Uh, everyone's complaining about traffic and parking and everything. And I've got uh, a school and a high school within a stone's throw, literally a stone's throw from my house. Mm. And I've got to t- uh, drive both of them. 10 minutes to 12 minutes away from where we live just to get to school every day and uh i'm sure i'm sure you'll agree that driving in rivas is it's it's i I don't find it a pleasant experience to be honest there's there's speed humps every yeah every hundred meters i mean it's uh you never hit traffic jams i mean that's one there's no traffic jams but 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 it is a long slow trip yeah the speed humps are really uh annoying uh Mm. you you get them every uh few meters and that's obviously i mean but it is necessary at the same time i mean but if you notice that there's no there's no standard for speed humps here. <laughs> you have got you noticed about that. that. Oh, the next one's uh, like down the bottom. Is that there, okay. there is a standard? They is have there? got. Uh, they have actually. I think uh, they actually have a height for speed. A uh, maximum height for speed. Maximum bumps. height. I don't really? know if it's ten centimeters or something. Is maximum height but, for but speed the, bumps. The, there's one down there which is about. Yeah. Uh, Rivas haven't quite uh, <laughs> grasped the uh, the concept of maximum heights. And you can bump. see you can see how many cars uh, scraped the. I mean, it's 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 unbelievable. Yeah. I've never been able to work it out. 
I mean, they are and going they, too fast if they are scraping the uh, the bottoms of the cars. I think in most cases, well, unless the, I mean, you could have a sports car. Here. You'd get well, no, you can't. No, I mean, no. if, you can't. You can't have the money, car. and you went and bought a Lamborghini. You wouldn't be able to drive it around Rivas. It'd be impossible. Well, the car uh, you've probably obviously got a bit of a bit of uh, height between the the ground. Yeah, I've got a van. So I've got a van. I've got a I've got a <laughs> Subaru. So I, I don't have a problem. But even my girlfriend's car, which is quite low to the ground, there's one. Even if you go over it at ten kilometres an hour, you scrape the scrape the, you scrape the bottom of the car. Yeah. Unbelievable, but anyway, that's uh, that's a bugbear. That's a bugbear. <laughs> but the, it's not easy to move through. No, it's a lot of roundabouts, a lot of speed bumps. Yeah. Um, it's not not a particularly pleasant uh, trip where when you're going from one side of Rio to the other, uh, it's slowing down, s- speeding up. You know, it's just, it's just a pain. But again, it, there's no traffic, so I mean, I find it quite pleasant in that sense. There's not really a big problem with traffic. Uh, parking in general is pretty good. Uh, the only problem is is when you go somewhere where there's a big event on or school, and then you've like, got the issue. But then even then with the school, I don't ever try and park next to the school. I park about two hundred meters away. Yeah, but from you're the school unusual in that sense because most people want to park. It, yeah, they the want park right in front of the school. And it's like, well, you know, you can, you can walk hundred meters. Mm. Yeah, you know, the kids aren't going to die for a hundred meter walk. In fact, it's probably the opposite. You know, it's going to come to probably live longer. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's just something that I think yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a mentality that um, a lot of parents have, uh, not just in Spain and other countries as well, but here yeah, I, yeah. I notice it a lot in Rivas. Yeah. And uh, as you said, we've got the fiestas, the yes. local uh, the local town parties, whatever you call that. I, I don't really know. Town fair. Ta- is it a fair? Is it? Well, it is. Yeah, it's a fun fair, and I've got fair. you know yeah. this is it's a Spanish town fair, I think, really. That's right. Not quite. Yeah, you know, it's not like a small town fair, what we would call a town fair back well, in they, my town. Well, they do have one down down here in the old part of the city yeah. where they try to uh, have some type of old town feel. Yeah. But the one they have up here, I mean, to be honest, it's uh, it's uh, one of the worst things I've ever seen. <laughs> the 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 noise levels are um, are uh, terrible. Uh, it's extremely expensive. Um, they've got I me mean, basically yeah, for the, for those that. You know, want to know what it's like? They basically uh, have a fun fair with uh, you know dodgems and uh, yeah, the quite a lot, quite a lot of rides there. It's quite you know, it's quite good and everything. But it's three euros one ride. Yeah, well, th- uh, those so are expensive. I-, I was talking down whether you know where they have the bar area. The bar is oh, that's okay. Where yeah. they have every is, is every different bar has its own music music system, <laughs> yeah. and they're all competing with each other to see who has it the loudest. Yeah. And uh, if you go there past a certain time, it's just impossible to get anything to eat or drink. Yeah. Basically, there's just so many people. I'm and quite happy to go there. To be honest, I, I quite I quite enjoy it. You see so well, many people there and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, I, I like to go yeah, there like once, it. but I'm not one of these people who's going there every day. And of course, they have the fireworks, but and, uh, yeah. and the parking is a problem when that is on. Yeah. I mean, no, e- e- even here pain. where we are, the cars are coming all the way down yeah. and uh, parking around this area as well. Yeah. So, but uh, there's a bus up there now, so maybe that. Will uh, change this year. I don't know, but that might um, help out a little bit. And we're we're within walking distance, so it's not really a mm. big problem for us. But yeah, for the people that are coming from the other side of Rivas, or even from the the village, I mean, it's a long old walk from the village. It's a good it is, 15, it is, yeah. 15 minute walk, if not more, from here, depending on how quickly you walk. So yeah, I think a lot of people it's are going to take cars. It's uphill as well. But it's the amount of, it, amazing the amount of people that take cars, but then they spend all night drinking at the. Well, uh, well, if you want, the on, the, the, well, on the Saturday morning, there's a lot of cars just parked in the street yeah. because they've obviously got too pissed and <laughs> haven't been able to take the car home. But uh, yeah, that that that's the thing, and I mean, it is just a, a feast of um, fried food and uh, yeah. alcohol. Yeah, I enjoy it. Lots of, <laughs> lots. Of, I, I, like, uh, I actually lots do really like the fiestas. I just find them a little bit too expensive. Mm. Uh, I think the the rides could be cheaper. Well, I did a video um, last year, and I said I, I I like them for the fact that people come together, they see each other, they, yeah. you see people that you haven't seen for a while, you might have a drink or whatever. Yeah. I love it. I see all my my old students, the the mums and dads, and that walking around and. Uh, so, you know, I can't, can't, it takes me an hour just to walk uh, from one side of the fun fed to the other because you're seeing so many people and saying hello. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy it. And I normally go a couple of times. I think I've seen you a couple of times. Yeah, I'm time. sure. I normally go a couple of times every year. And, you know, the kids want to go as well, of, of course. course yeah. But again, if you've well, got a family, four of us, well, that's the reason and I you go on the rides, you're talking 12 euros every ride. So you go on three rides and all of a sudden you've spent, you know, oh, you go uh, on them 40 as well, rides. 
Well, the kids want me to go on with them. So. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I don't. I, don't uh, I, I enjoy it. I like them. Yeah. I, I get too dizzy, <laughs> so I uh, try to avoid. But, but my yeah, I go up there for my. You're getting old. Go up there. I am getting old. <laughs> yeah, I am getting okay. old and grumpy, as people are saying. <laughs> the uh, the um, yeah, I go up there for my son. Basically, I mean, yeah. it's it, it's a young it's a young person's uh, of course event. So I go up there for him. And uh, but you said it's your uh, daughter's first. First time that she's gonna actually go on her own with her uh, friends. Yeah, with her friends. Yeah. So she's going with a group of about seven of them, I think. So going up there. So and no, no. <laughs> not even thirteen. No, she's. Uh, we, we've given her a time. She's gonna. You know, she's got she a curfew. Go and she's got a time where I'm gonna probably meet her and walk her back. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let her walk back on her own and and things. You know, you never know. I get a little argument between a couple of friends or something and all of a sudden you know they're walking back on their own or something does like she have that, a big so. group of friends or? yeah she does and uh, this time I think it's the first time she's actually meeting uh, friends from her old school and from her new high school okay, so cool, cool. Uh, it's going to be a nice little group together good alright so moving on from the fiestas which um, uh, every town and village in Spain has some type right it's, yep. it's not unique to uh, Rivas no, no, Madrid it's ha- everywhere, everywhere. Madrid has San Isidro. Uh, every town and village has uh, has uh, fiestas here uh, and in uh, Portugal. Probably it's a European thing. In fact, I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's an amazing thing. There's one of my students, He's he goes to his village um, every, uh, pretty much every other week he goes to his village. Two people live in the village uh, during the whole year. In the summer, there's about 150 of them that live there for a couple of months over the summer, but two people live there for the whole year and they have fiestas yeah, yeah. and uh, they've got a mayor and I mean, it's <laughs> like how do you have a mayor there's two people living there I, mean, I find it absolutely amazing I think great it's yeah. brilliant yeah. yeah that's actually uh, that's actually a, a, a talking point because there are a lot of villages which are you know, they're going to disappear a lot of yeah, those places will. you know well either that or they'll get redeveloped um, and well, actually uh, I think there are people trying to do that now it's not that easy else. to do apparently I think no. there's, there's some type of uh, uh, law or something which means that it's not that easy to do yeah uh, because the land's owned by people, and you never really know what what's going on there. But um, yeah, that's a that's a characteristic. A lot of villages are nearly abandoned, and in in the summer they pick up, and of course they have their fiestas and they have their mayor. I mean, the, you see on the television all the time a mayor with population of twenty. You yeah. Know? Oh, they should just join the villages together, but they're trying yeah. to keep some type of independence, I suppose. Well, it's a bit. It's a very different the way uh, towns, cities, everything are uh, uh, sort of organized if you like uh here is very different to what i'm used to back home yeah. um i mean for example in in the uk uh you've got a, a hamlet then you've got a village then town then city and unless i'm uh, mistaken uh a hamlet is a group of houses uh that doesn't have a church or a school uh, or a town hall or a it's just a group of ha- yeah it's just a group of houses uh, a village is uh, a, a, obviously a group of houses that has a church, but it doesn't have a town hall and probably doesn't have uh, a school. And then you've got a town which has schools, uh, town hall and a church. Mm. That's basically the... And then, of course, the city. It can only be a city, I think, if it's got a cathedral. Oh, really? Yeah, it, does, offici- it doesn't, officially. It doesn't go on population. Yeah, officially. No, it's not on population. It's okay. officially... Or it's, it was all, obviously... It's, it's, uh, sort of tradition and law through centuries and that's how it was always done because uh, Milton Keynes was trying to get city status years ago with a population of 300,000 and didn't have, um, a, didn't have, and a, cathedral. have a cathedral so they built a cathedral uh, <laughs> really? yeah yeah they built a cathedral uh, so yeah it's um, it's quite funny and of course uh, what happens is is uh, for example my town it has a town hall uh, it has we've got, actually got seven churches in my town uh, a population of about 10,000 people religious uh, area? no Okay. Not at all. It's just uh, they've been History. built there over yeah. centuries. Uh, yeah. And then you've got Catholic, Methodist, uh, Church of England, which, yeah. which is the biggest one, uh, Baptist, Evangelist, you've got everything. And then yeah. one that's in ruins because it got hit by lightning years ago. And, you know, just uh, things like that. So it's um, so that the town, it has a council, and that council is actually um, also in charge of the hamlets and the villages that are close by as well because they don't have their own town mm-hmm. uh, council or mayor so and it works the same here does it I suppose uh, not here well as I was saying they've got 
mayors and town uh, town councils for villages. Yeah, but is that because they have a church in that in that thing as well? Because I mean, that there are some hamlets, of course, here know. that don't have any. Uh, so I, I, I imagine it's there's some type of yeah. way to classify. I don't I know. I don't know. Uh, it's one, but it's one thing that's always sort of caught my attention because you know, you've got mayors and stuff in villages with one or two people or even a hundred people. It just doesn't seem. Yeah, but ma- maybe it is because of that fact that they do have that infrastructure there. Maybe I mean I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. All right, good. Now, we've got another couple of comments here about uh, raising bilingual kids. For example, Nika. Hey, oh, hi. Do you speak English to your kids or Spanish or both? And to your partners, are you are your kids bilingual? Keep up the good work. Thank you. Another one. Uh, interesting video. Uh, raising bilingual children. Uh, the topic. I'm a native speaker, says Paul. Married to a Spanish lady and we live in Spain. Our children are two and a half and although I speak to them in English, they almost always respond to me in Spanish. So how long does it take before they become fully bilingual? Any tips? Now, I saw that you did reply. Yeah. Uh, so I'll get your uh, comments uh, along those lines of your uh, reply. So uh, what have you done in your particular case there, John? Because that's a problem that I uh, have at the moment. My son doesn't like to speak English. He understands everything. I mean, there's nothing that he doesn't understand. I think, I mean, obviously, each each kid's in a different world. That's Uh, it, that's it. But, I mean, basically, with my my youngest daughter, uh, I was the only person that spoke to her in English. There's no one one. else. So her sister speaks, they they speak Spanish together? Now, say my youngest one, when she was born... Oh, I was okay, the, okay. I was the only one who spoke to in English okay. at the time. We didn't have FaceTime or or anything like that. It was just phone, you know, the phone, and that was it. You know. So what we did is uh, I spoke to her in English all the time. My wife didn't want to speak to her in English. My wife's fluent; she's bilingual, uh, but she didn't want to speak to her in English. She wanted to speak to her in her own native tongue, which, which is, is normal, f- normal, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I spoke to her in English, but. For the first three years of my youngest daughter's life, I was taking her to school every morning, picking her up every day, bathing her, putting her to bed, giving her dinner and everything. Uh, My wife had a different timetable. Uh, She was getting back very late and, you know, uh, um, sometimes the poor thing didn't even see uh, much of Chloe until uh, the weekend, you know, it was was like that. Uh, So she did have quite a bit of English, but of course in the nursery, anywhere else, all the family, friends, they're all Spanish. So I had the same issue. Um, she understood everything. She wasn't actually allowed to watch TV in Spanish uh, unless it was a Spanish show, which we were watching. Uh, so, for example, Peppa Pig. Uh, Always English. Yeah. We actually started uh, watching Peppa Pig before Peppa Pig was even a thing in Spain. Uh, we got them all from the UK on DVDs and the toys and everything. And we put it all in English. It was it was our way of introducing English um uh, in a way that was going to be fun and different and and she really she loved it and also i traveled uh to and from the village every day which is a good 25 minutes so i was putting an episode a couple of episodes on in the car and it was a way to keep her amused and and listen to english um and that worked however she understood everything uh, that i said not a problem but she did not want to speak to me in english mm. when she just turned four we, uh, she, her birthday's in July she just turned four and in August we went back to England and I still had this problem she just didn't want to speak to me in English and we got back home and uh, walked in the door and my my mum said to her she goes uh, Are you okay sweetie she goes yes but uh, quiero leche in Spanish and my mum just looked at her with a blank face like and she was like quiero leche uh, was, yeah. and I said to her I said Chloe if you don't speak to granny in English she won't understand you so there won't be any milk ice cream chocolate or anything and she was like (gasps) granny I want milk please and that was it two weeks and she didn't speak a a word of Spanish in two weeks even to her mum she spoke English the whole time and we were her jaws dropped to the floor and she just reeled it off yeah unbelievable so 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 it it just clicks so the story is that 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 they have it there yeah you've just got to stick you just got to try and come out you just got to stick with it, uh, push it. I mean, I've got to admit the don't 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 start speaking Spanish. Don't speak Spanish to them at all if you can help it. I got into a bad habit of when there was other people near nearby, uh, that, you know, that were Spanish. My typical Britishness was, you know, be polite and speak in their native 
uh, tongue even to my daughter. So I started speaking Spanish to my daughter, saying, oh, can you pass me the salt in Spanish? And, and then all of a sudden I was thinking, well, this is ridiculous. No, I've got to speak to her in English all the time, even if the other people don't understand. And then if they, they look confused or if they need to know what I've said, I'll repeat it in Spanish to them. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's what I end up doing. But you've really got to stick to your guns. And we put everything on the TV uh, in English. Uh, we I only spoke to her in English. Um, if we went back to England, we uh, even my wife spoke English the whole time we were in England because it was like, that's the rules. When we go to England, you have to speak in English, mm. even on the aeroplane. It was like, as soon as you got on the aeroplane, boom. And we had these funny little rules and they found it quite amusing. And then, and then when my younger daughter um, uh, was born, we then had to start all over again. And that was harder. The second one is harder yeah. because she had a, a sister to rely on. Yeah. So she got her sister to speak for her. And they speak Spanish amongst themselves. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So but I, she, I, I've actually, like yeah. I said, I see them walking the dog and I hear them talking yeah. and, you know, I mean, they look quite English, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then you see them, uh, you know, chapping away, chapping away in Spanish, yeah. But yeah. I suppose that's always going to be the big sister influence. That, yeah, that but they, it's, it's, they've got over it now. We had, Well, I did push it and, I, you know, when she spoke to me in Spanish, I said, I don't understand, tell me in English. Mm. And, and she got really annoyed, you know. Was like, and I'm like, tell me in English. You know, you just keep calm yeah. in English, and if they if they don't reply, just ignore it, and then they eventually do it, and because, that's it. Because they don't go to a bilingual school. No, my no. my son doesn't go to a bilingual school either, um, and the English level at the school, in my opinion, to be honest, is is I, I don't think it helps him. Um, mm. You know, I mean, he learns to to. I mean, he passes English, of course. He you know, yeah. gets his nines and his tens or whatever, but but I don't think it helps him. Particularly, well, know? they don't have a chance. This is uh, well, this is where I'm earning my, you know, my wage every month. Is mm. the, in the schools they, they don't, don't have a chance to speak English, mm. and that's why all of my classes are all conversation that's activities it. and everything. Yeah. It yeah. gives them a chance. And what I found is that as well. I mean, obviously, it's a lot more difficult for me to to go back to Australia because of the distance and the cost and everything. But I mean, he's been there four times, and obviously, when he was young, it wasn't an influence. Mm. But the last time I did notice that he is able to i mean his sentences are not perfect yeah he's not the same as a, an australian kid the same age as him yeah but he's able to 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 say what he what he wants more or yeah. less and if he doesn't know a word he'll sort of you know how old is he now he's yeah, coming on to nine nine yeah, yeah. so uh, i'm i'm confident that in the next few years he'll be able to yeah. you know to 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 develop into a, a more of a, a fully bilingual person, yeah. and the other aspect is that we spoke about before off 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 camera was that you can always send them home for a yeah. year education or two or whatever, just so that, that not only the language, but I think also it's important that, that mm. they learn the cultural differences as well. Yeah, I think that's, that's what we was discussing earlier. I think mm. that's so important because um, it's very difficult trying to explain cultural differences and traditions between two different countries it took me t uh, time to understand um some of the 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 ways i don't know how the ways of being that the way of, the way doing, of things. doing things the the daily routines of some uh things in spain uh it didn't quite click to to what i was used to and i found it very hard to to get used to it initially like you know eating times and everything else as well and it's very difficult to explain these things to someone who hasn't experienced it fully. I'm not talking about going back on, uh, going somewhere on holiday for two weeks. I'm talking about experiencing it. And my daughters, uh, being children, they'll just say exactly what they think. If they don't like something, they'll say it. If they like something, they'll say it. And they've had a lot of experience in the UK now. We go back three times a year, more or less. We'll always go back for a couple of weeks, a week at a time. Uh, my parents come over to visit us as well. And they they're very used to the english way of life yeah, now as well yeah. and of course i ha do things well, in, the, in, the, in a british way as well, well and they home. always have it in that the, they mm. they know that they are different they know yeah. that they do have that english element or yeah. in my case that australian element that 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 foreign element yeah. so they are able to adapt a lot quicker i think yes the reason that he says you know can he said uh, paul here says can one take it as a given that they will become fully bilingual now no. I, I always thought that that was going to be the case but i met and you know um i think it was russell russell's russell son, son paul he didn't like speaking english at all i remember no. being with russell before he passed away and um he his son called him up 
and he was what he's 40 or something is he i mean he's uh paul's got to be 30, no late maybe late 30s. 30s now maybe mid 30s yeah and i remember russell i thought oh, i'm gonna have his name's paul and paul and uh, he'll have a conversation and russell was speaking to him in spanish and i said yeah but did you not he said no he rejected the language or something yeah. he, he didn't want to learn it and i thought oh no you've you've got to be i didn't, re- I didn't take really that into consideration no you've really got to be firm and i think i i probably was extremely strict with it uh, well i was as well in fact my son's first words were this this <laughs> this and and, That's and, good. and my girlfriend's auntie said oh he's not going to learn spanish i said don't be stupid Spain. Yeah. So, so you, you you get it both ways. Yeah. Because I was with him all the time. I was, you know, I, I was working from home, and I was, yeah. thinking, you know, so that was that influence that he yeah. had. But remember, uh, you know, seeing this other bloke, you know, whose whose father was British and Spanish mother, obviously, but and and seeing that he 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 didn't speak English no fluently. That was a bit of a shocker for me as well. Yeah, it was it was a real <laughs> eye opener. I thought, well, it's possible. I I know a few people that have done that. Really? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, and and not just English. Um, I, I mean, I know some people that uh, have got Romanian parents. They don't speak Romanian. Um, uh, even Chinese. Uh, there's a couple of uh, Chinese people that lived in in the UK uh, near where I was, and they speak perfect English, and they've got very limited Chinese. Um, yet their parents and their grandparents were living there. With they them. just rejected Chinese. Mm. So I think it, it, it really depends on uh, one, the kids, and two, how strict you are of making sure that they actually understand it and they learn it. I think you've got to push it. Um, yeah, I, 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 you, I think you've got to push it. There's a certain age when the pushing doesn't become relevant anymore probably. When. You can't leave it too late. You've got to, you've got to get in there early. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the key, the key ages are between the age of uh, three and seven. If you... If you if you've been talk, talking to a child um, all the way up until they're three, they should be understanding everything you mm. say, but they might not, they might not want to speak English. Uh, from three, you want to try and get them to speak in English, and you you know push them to say certain things in English. And then if they don't, by the time they're four or five, you really really want to start uh, pushing English on them more. So uh, you know to make sure they don't watch uh, TV dubbed. If it's in English, watch it in English. If it's in Spanish, watch it in Spanish. But be strict on it. Don't let them change the language to a dubbed. Uh, well, that's, well that's, that, that's when they're young. Yeah. But obviously, now with your daughter's, you know, teenager, she's probably watching YouTube videos. She's got a favorite YouTuber. She's got no. Can't watch it in Spanish. If she's if she's watching something that's uh, original version in English. No, no, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm it. saying, but she's probably got her Spanish YouTubers as well. Actually, she watches most of the YouTube channels that she watches are in English. Oh, and right, my okay, uh, younger okay, daughter okay. as well. Yeah, uh, a lot of Americans and, and that Koreans. Bi- and that bilingual aspect yeah. of the uh, of the television is that I think that's fundamental as well. I mean, everything. I I can't watch a dubbed film basically i don't like watching du- I, i've got used to it i don't like i, watching I, dub I films, can't even get used to and it. i it avoid just, it if i can it just doesn't sound natural. the speech is not natural no. so if you watch a spanish movie the speech is natural to to to, yeah. to the to the situation but these are not and there was a problem that did you hear about the game of thrones controversy uh the only thing i saw about that was the starbucks coffee cup that was in one of the scenes no, <laughs> well, apparently, no with the translation with the dubbing the other day apparently there was a line in the film what's which was uh she can't see us and they translated it in spanish as si can see us okay si, si can see us and what was the well they didn't translate it yeah it was a no nos puede ver it, which yeah. would have been the translation they just translated it into spanish si can see us <laughs> You didn't see that? <laughs> I'll watch it in English anyway. I haven't seen yeah. any of that. Well, gone, well there, apparently there was a scene where, there, where, the, where, where one of the characters said, she can't see us, it's too dark. Yeah. And they translated, she can't see us. But why did they do it like that? Because they didn't understand what they were saying in English. They, <laughs> they thought it was part of the language of Game of Thrones. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. You didn't see it? <laughs> no. no. So they thought it was part of the language. So the translation was, si- ah, That's a si- big mistake. Si- si can see us. That's a big mistake. How on earth did they make that? I mean, you'd expect someone who's in charge of the dubbing and everything to either be well, they're completely <laughs> fluent in the language that they're dubbing or well, at they're least blaming have someone it, there to help. They're blaming it on the, on, the, on the time restrictions because before they used to have six months to be able to, 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 to dub a film. Yeah. But now because of the, the internet, the original, you know, the, the releases, 
the piracy and all of these things basically they've got a, like a two-day turnaround to be able to do these things uh, and and they're blaming the stress of that for this it must be difficult for this type I mean, of yeah, i mean it's fair easy yeah. but that goes back to the thing just leave it in the original version and uh, you know which then portugal for example that's mm. what they do i think eventually maybe in spain over time they will stop dubbing quite so much in the future maybe um but at the moment you've still got a lot of people um in their 40s 50s which have got very low level of uh, english for yeah, example they, in this case yeah but they're used to dubbing they're already used to it uh, so if they haven't got a very good level of english mm. at the moment uh over four you know if they're, it's basically over 40s really maybe 35 40 and above the level of english isn't uh fantastic because of the the way english was taught at school at the time i think and if they haven't got a good level of English and they're used to dubbing, they're going to c continue watching dubbing. Whereas the uh, the younger children now with the bilingual schools, the pressure of children that aren't in bilingual schools to go to academies and everything because of children going to bilingual schools, well, the level of English is increasing. So I maybe know the future, I mean, I, there's no doubt that yeah. the level is getting better. But yeah. um, you know, I I I think and the, one of the points that I made before for me it's, it's the it's the the speech just doesn't seem natural. And also no. a lot of the actors do different voices. Yeah. So I remember there was an actor at one time who was both Kevin Costner and um, Bruce Willis. <laughs> so I remember. Uh, someone was watching a film I think it was at my girlfriend's parents house and I heard ah Kevin Costner's uh, must be a Kevin Costner movie on I'll, I'll, I'll go and see what it is and it was Bruce Willis <laughs> <laughs> so that, that they were doing two or three different yeah. voices and you know how can you watch Kevin Costner with do you know what I mean yeah. you have to I have to admit though I've watched uh, films that have been dubbed in other languages before oh, um, Chinese. Spanish the Spanish dubbing uh, all the ones I've seen is absolutely fantastic. Well, if you look at the they old, do really well. If you look they at the old really Bruce Lee dubbing. movies, but yeah, uh, yeah, you compare them to some of the other uh, languages, and it's not, <laughs> it's not good. I mean, it's just like the literally the mouths are moving and there's no sound, and then all of a sudden they start talking. But the Spanish dubbing, I've got to admit, they do coordinate it very, very well for dubbing, hmm. but I just don't like dubbing. Yeah. So. But anyway, all right, good. Now, we've been going for 47 uh, Ooh, minutes, yeah. so uh, I think we've got to wrap it up. Yep. So, uh, John, thanks for your participation. Again, questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Remember, you can download the podcast on all of the major podcast platforms. We'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.